Ruby offers some incredibly powerful data filtering. Now let's say that we had to take some of the data from our Ruby program and we need to export it into a CSV file so that we can either pass that on to our clients or further examine it. Or maybe we just want to save that data as sort of a, a backup. Nonetheless, whatever you're using that CSV file for, Ruby does offer an incredibly easy to use CSV class as a standard library. Now because the CSV class is a standard library, we're going to have to require it first here. So require CSV. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this dogs array, which has an array with three arrays within it. And in these child arrays, the first element within the array is the name of the dog. And the second element is the color of the fur for that dog. So what we want to do is we want to create a file called dogs.csv and we want to place this information into that CSV file. So how might we do that? Well the first thing we have to do is we have to create the file and this can be done using the CSV open method within the CSV class. The First thing you pass through is the file name for the file that you want to create and then the second thing is the mode. So we're gonna go ahead and use W as the mode you can find more modes if you search for open and go to IO open and then scroll up in the documentation to find these following modes. So W is write only. So it's going to truncate the existing file. Um, and then later on, we're going to use the R mode so that we can go ahead and read the file. So let's use W here. And then we're going to pass a block in here. And the block is going to take a parameter of CSV. And what we can do is we can go ahead and append the CSV. Now what I'm doing is not correct, but I want to show you what happens if we do this. So first we create the CSV file here, right? And then we add in the array of dogs to the CSV file. Now some might think that's all we need to do, but if we go ahead and we reopen that file using the read mode, and then we use read on that. If we reopen that, we can see what happens here. So if you take a look at the data here, you can see that there is one array, one big array, which stands for the entire CSV file. And then there appears to be three child arrays in here. But if you take a closer look, these are strings. Huh, that's kind of weird. Well, the thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we iterate over the array here for dogs. And so we'll go ahead and we'll iterate over it. And instead of just, you know, appending that whole dogs array, we're going to append one line at a time. So it's going to first append Rex, then Sammy, then Ranger into the CSV file. And let me just place that all in one line. I like that a little more. A little better it's a little cleaner and if we rerun this we're gonna see that now we get exactly what we want we have Rex that's tan Sammy that's gray and Ranger that's brown so we have one parent CSV array with three arrays in there that aren't strings so you don't see quotes around this they are actual arrays that represent rows of data so that's pretty cool let's take a look at the dogs.csv that we have here so Rex, let me go ahead and increase that. We have Rex is 10, Sammy is gray, Ranger is brown. And let me actually show you what that would look like if we just let that go with the whole array. So if we regenerate this class or this file, you'll see that this doesn't look right. As a CSV file, this doesn't look right and it's gonna read incorrectly. This will actually read, now that I look at it better, most likely as one entire string on the first row. So we want to make sure that we set that up correctly by iterating through it correctly and then we get exactly what we want. So that is perfect. That is how to go ahead and create a CSV file and then read a CSV file. And this could actually be shortened up a bit. Let me go ahead and remove some of that. This you could actually use the CSV read method which just reads the file into 
whatever you're going to be using it for. So this goes ahead and it reads it just like what we did before, but much shorter. 